Yo, what's good, everybody? What you guys are about to watch is my last video podcast series with some of my favorite people of all time. This live podcast series was done with the men of the standard. If you are a man of excellence looking to be around the community of extraordinary men, go ahead and tap into the standard. The link is in the description below. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump into it. And I hope you guys enjoy the live podcast. Yo, what's good, everybody? This is Hafiz, and welcome to a one-of-a-kind live podcast experience. We've been doing this show for so many years and we've gotten an opportunity to meet so many people and it's been amazing. But one of the biggest things I wanted to do is I wanted to now take this podcast experience that I've been blessed with throughout all these years and bring it to all the amazing men who've tapped into my community to standard to be able to show them and introduce them to my network and all these great guys. So you guys are in for an absolute treat. So in order to start off this podcast series, I, listen man, in the, today, people throw the word goat around way too often. They use that word to describe me and I say, I am not a goat yet. I'll be there one day. I don't like when that word gets thrown around. But there are certain people who you just meet, you interact with, you experience, you get to know them and you truly understand. That, that G-O-A-T word was created for men like that. This man is one of the realest human beings that I've ever met. On the internet, there's so many fictional characters that turn on when the cameras turn on, but then when the cameras turn off, they go right back to whoever they really were. But this man, whether it's on camera, or off camera, he's been the same exact guy. And when we created the company, The Standard, this guy truly embodies it in all areas of his life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, husband, father, business owner, so many amazing things. I can go on for days about this guy, but the podcast <laughs> would take way too much time. So let's go ahead and bring back one of my most favorite individuals to ever sit down and talk to, the one and only Jose Zuniga. My man. My brother. You know man. I appreciate you, right? Listen, man. I should be a co-host, bro. <laughs> At this <laughs> point, bro, third round. It's the, third, third, third time's a charm. Brother. Third time's a charm, bro. Br brother, man. Bro, and I appreciate the words. You know, I'm humbled. Yeah. I'm glad you can have me here, man. Listen, listen. First and foremost, congratulations, brother, on the new, new addition to your family, man. The bro. heir to the Zuniga. The heir, bro. The heir. <laughs> Mission complete, yeah. right? Like, Are man. you done? <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I, I truly love kids. Yeah. I truly feel it's part of my mission to have kids. Like, yeah. it's, it's what we should do as men. So I, I don't know yet. I don't know what the answer is. And, and, and the reason I say that is because it's like, for me, it's, it's not just making the kid. Yeah. I want to be a good example. I want to I be there for my kids, right? Yeah. And I also have the balance of building a business. So it's like, at what point am I going to have too many kids that I can't do this? Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. So don't know yet. Let's, so if there was a cap... Mm -hmm. What would be the number where it's like, nah, this is just too much? When I met my wife, she said six. Okay. Hey. Yeah. I can, bro, I can pop him out. No problem, bro. Like, I'm a fertile man, bro. No, that's not a problem. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Two is nice right now. Yeah. I think three is kind of like that golden number. Mm. You know? One extra to, to replace both of us. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay. One of the lineage, you know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah but I, I couldn't say. I yeah. couldn't say exactly. Listen, man. Um, I think to me... What I've learned last year was one of my challenges is that like, I'm very good at flattery. Mm -hmm. So I'm really good at like saying things about people. And a lot of times when I- Oh, I know. <laughs> like, I'm hype man, bro. Like, yeah, I'm hype up. <laughs> but what I realized is like, part of what I say is inspirational. Mm -hmm. So I'm like trying to speak into somebody who they are. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gets me in trouble sometimes because sometimes people kind of overestimate their worth at times because I speak so highly of them. Yeah, they think like, yeah, yeah. well, you said I'm this, that, and the third. So yeah, therefore, it happens all the time. So I realized like this year, I want to like not be as fluff with my words and not just try to always be like pleasing the people yep. what I said. But there's, there's a few people who I look back to everything I've ever said about them and say, that was no fluff. Yep. I genuinely believe what I said about who they are. Yeah. And you are one of those people. Appreciate that, man. And I, and I mean that because, like, in today's society, and as you already know, there's, like, so many different influencers, people popping up who are trying to teach men, trying to be a big brother, who's trying to be an uncle, who's trying yep. to 
help men in some way, shape, or form. And they're just so disingenuous. They're so inauthentic. They yep. really don't have the best interest in heart. Mm -hmm. And for you, for me to actually see you for all these years, and like you are one of the most authentic individuals who, who is really helping transform the lives of men, man. It's been an inspiration yeah. to get to know you. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I've always said this, like my content, when I started producing content, it was never a, let me get rich, right? It was always a, a reflection of what I was going through. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to my earliest videos, <clears throat> what I was going through at that time as a 17, 18 year old, yeah. was I was a dweeb, I couldn't get a girl, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and you as a man, your problems magnify, mm -hmm. right? The more you put yourself under stress, the more you want, the more ambitious you become, the more problems you, you have that uh, require a higher level of IQ, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So all my content has always been a reflection of what I'm going through at that time, mm -hmm. right? When we started this podcast, I told you, I, I think it is my imperative to have children. Yeah. That is my, my new mindset, right? How do I enter that masculine frame and become a great example for my children? Mm -hmm. So they then can carry the torch, the lineage, and keep expanding, yeah. right? By the way, guys, if you guys see tattoos on my hand, <laughs> it's my daughter, bro. <laughs> They're fake, man. They're fake. Yeah. <clears throat> I was telling them that, like, <clears throat> every time I, I head out now, she, like, runs to the door, Daddy, Daddy, before you go to work. And then she slaps tattoos on me. So, like, yeah, just in case you're wondering, yeah. kind of fruity, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, my content has always been that, you know. And, and, and at, at this stage of my life, it's, it's building a massive business, something yeah. insane, yeah. right? And also building myself up as a man, yeah. right? And yeah. building every characteristic that, that, that's associated to that. Yeah. Man, to me, I think there's so many ways I, what I, ways I want to go at today in our conversation. First question I have for you is, we weigh, is that the correct way of pronounce it? I'll weigh, I'll weigh, huh? I'll weigh, I'll weigh. Yep, yep, yep. Reverse logistics. Yep. New business. Yep. How has that been going? It's a beast, man. Yeah. It's a beast. Uh, Can you explain I'll, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah, yeah. so basically, our goal, so I've always been an e -com, a DTC, right, direct-to-consumer guy. My, I used to believe retail was going to die. Uh, now I don't believe that anymore, right? I believe retail will stay here forever. Mm. So my thought process was, how can we do a perfect uh, intermediate, right? Uh, uh, a perfect synergy be between online and offline. Mm. That perfect shopping experience for the consumer. Right? So that would include same-day delivery, that would include same-day exchanges, that would include uh, hassle-free returns. So handling reverse logistics, which is an $800 billion industry that nobody even touches, right? Mm. Nobody cares about returns. That's why most of the time you'll buy a product and it'll stay there. Exactly. Happens to me all the time. If I don't want it, it just stays there, right? So our, our process is how can I get you that in-person feel when you shop from the comfort of your home, mm. right? That's what we're building with that way. Yeah. It's a beast. Uh, I'll give you a quick... Uh, example of that like I lost about a million five last year on a bad app right and bad developers really and I was paying 150 200 a, a, a month that's what I was paying that was my invoice to them you know Sheesh. so now I have to start all over again with, with that right find new like problems always magnify but that's because the goal is big and I'm okay with that right listen so I remember at one point you were telling me you were learning like Python and stuff oh I like did so to I went be, to school to be able I, I took a, I took <laughs> classes at Columbia yeah, Columbia University. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't know that, but again, I'm, I'm willing to do what it takes, right? I want to be a billionaire. What, whatever it takes, I'll do. And I knew what my weakness was. I knew I didn't under... And that's why now I know I lost that money. They were finessing me all day long. Really? I had no idea what I was talking about. Wow. Right? I, I didn't know about data, backend servers. I didn't know about any of that. Now I do. I, at least I understand surface level yeah. where I can, you know, better make decisions. Yeah. Okay. But most, and, and the, it's funny you brought that up, man. Most people think that once you graduate high school, it's done. Yeah. It's not done, man. Yeah. You never stop learning. Yeah. And it's crazy because the more you learn, the more you realize you do not know anything. Yeah. I was telling my brother this literally yesterday. Like, shout out you know, Juan. Shout out Juan. My, the guy's a G right next to me every step of the way. Um, and, you know, I, I was telling him, like, you know, we're, we're pretty big. And by every account, we are blessed. We are 0.001% if you, if you take into account everything we've done and the amount of money we've made, right? And, and why does it feel that even at this stage, we don't know anything? Yeah, I can make a million dollars easy in a year, but that's, that's not enough for us, right? That's not, <laughs> that's not anything, Different right? Human being so right you here. get to a point, like the more you start learning, the more you realize you do not know anything. Mm. You're almost like a scientist. When, when you're building a business, it's like, it's constant like hypothesis testing, right? Yeah. 
You set up a hypothesis, I believe this will work, you test it out, you end up losing money, right? And 95% of the time you lose, just so you know. Okay, so <clears throat> I was going in one direction, you opened a whole can of worms, we got to stop and we had to talk about what you're talking about. What I don't get about you, <laughs> he grooming, okay, J Black, yep, essentials, yep, um, Huawei, 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 TMF, that's a brand TMF, name. TMF Spanish, TMF Spanish, part Sto owner of Manscaped, Manscaped, yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing fingers, Jose, yeah, wife, mm hmm. Child A, yep. child B, yep. whole family's on your back. Yep. What are you made of? <laughs> like, what are you, you, know, what, like, do you wait, stop, stop. We had a conversation before, mm -hmm. and I said, you're a superhero. Yeah. And you said, no, I'm not. Be honest. I'm not. I, I think every, most people are just not comfortable being uncomfortable. Most, most of you in this room, if I were to give you $100,000, you would stay there, to be honest with you. You would be comfortable with that. You know, and, and the reality is not everyone can, can be that person. And that's okay. You need people that are, I mean, just look at a standard deviation curve, right? 95% yeah. will be two standard deviations from the mean. That's where the bulk stays, right? So that 1%, and then when you go into the 0.0001%, yeah. you're talking about a handful of guys mm. that want that. Yeah. Constant stress, constant problems. Again, like, you can get to a point where you can make a million a year and live comfortably and not be stressed out all the time. 100,000 a year, right? Hey, yeah, you're about yeah, a million. Yeah. No, 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 like when you get to a point that, uh, of, of certain knowledge, you should be able to generate uh, between 100,000 and, and by the way, this is not instant either. I'm not saying you're gonna learn this in, in, in a year. Yeah. I always tell people this also, when it comes to money, you should change your mindset. This is not a, a six month game or a year game. This is a decade game. Yeah. I've been at it for 12 years. I started my first, you know, officially first business at 17, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm 28, so 11 years, a decade. And now for my new goal, I'm okay with the next 40 years. Mm. I'm okay with that outlook. Yeah. I'm not a super, that's what I'm saying, I'm not a superhero, but I'm okay with that. Whereas most people aren't okay with that. I mean, bro, go on social media right now. Yeah. Most people are complaining over a 40 hour work week because that's too much work. Yeah. Right, they want that work-life balance. Yeah. I don't believe in work-life balance. <laughs> I believe in making so much damn money that then I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. Right, that's my balance, that's my sanity. I can go into any vacation I want, I can buy whatever the hell I want. That's my balance, right? And, it, and, and, and a lot of it also is, I believe, the, the, the immigrant mentality, right? Like, you always feel like it's not enough because you could lose it. Yeah. And it's interesting that the more money you start making, the more you start networking with people that make serious money, right? Like, guys, in, bro, just the people that live in my building, man. Like, you start networking with these guys. They're older gentlemen, right? 50, 60, most of them white. Very few of them are people of color. And you just start seeing how their life is structured, how it's set up. It's, it's truly generational wealth. Yeah. Like they, they're, they, they're set up by generation, right? Their doc, spinal surgeon, that their, doc, their, their parents were spinal surgeons. Yeah. And then their kids are off studying in Paris, right? Like <laughs> that's the lifestyle that they live. Mm. So I always talk about like, instead of complaining that life is not fair, why don't you put that responsibility on your shoulders and say, I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. I'm going to be the guy that's going to change the lineage or the, 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 the transgression that my family lineage was going through. Because yeah. for most of us, we have the same cyclical problems, right? And most of them stay poor, always. Yeah. So, and, 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 sorry. No, they go, 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 go back, go. man, because it's like, I'm, <clears throat> I'm inspired because yeah, I, yeah. I, I just did a video on this. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the money. Money doesn't solve all your problems. You truly should be a 1% man across all aspects of your life. Yeah. If I take all of your shirts off right now and we start doing push-ups, <laughs> who's gonna be the last one standing? <laughs> Most of you won't, right? Like, you truly want, and, and that's what gives you balance. It gives you, like, when you have that true control over, like, I also wanna be a 1% man as a, as a husband, as, as a father. Like, it's not just the money. The money doesn't solve your problems. Yeah. Right? When you truly focus on everything. And for me, it started simple, right? For me, it was style, talking to women, grooming, right? Really getting all that stuff boiled down. Mm -hmm. And then you just start magnifying that, right? Like, how do I become more attractive? Yeah. How do I make more money? How am I healthier? How, how do I build a better body? Like, yeah. truly, how, how do I become more charismatic? How do I network better? We talked about that, yeah. right? That was one of my weaknesses. I'm working a lot on that. I love it. Right? So you find your weakness and you truly become, try to become great at everything. 
I'm not yeah. saying you will become great. You're going to lack a lot. But if that's your entire focus, you're going to get close. And when your outlook is a decade, I promise you. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not a su- Nobody's a superhero, bro. We're all humans. But if your outlook was a decade and that was your mentality, and for 10 years, no matter what your friends say, no matter what your family say, no matter who's hating, who's chirping, no matter none of that, no matter how many times you fail, because you're okay. Again, you're okay because you understand it's going to take me 10 years, right? I promise you, you're going to get to your goal. I think it's almost impossible for you not to get where you want to get. You know? All right. I, I, I said a lot. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. <clears throat> every time I think I know where I'm going. You don't be, don't, I, I, but I love this. I, I, love I, this I leave good. my piece speechless. Bro. That's my goal. Man. That's my goal. Listen, man. So I'm going to give a little bit of pushback to you not being a superhero. And here's why. Everything that you just said, the mindset that you have, how many percent of men have your mindset? But that's what I'm saying. It, that, it, it, it needs to be that way. I'm not going to lie to any of you. Most of you will never become millionaires. That's just, that is a statistic, a statistical anomaly. There's what, maybe a hundred, I'm I'm guessing, meaning a hundred guys, one of you will become a millionaire. That's it. It could be me. I could be the guy, right? And and all of you will go home and live the the rest of your life the same, (laughs) right? No, that that, it is, I'm not going to lie. Too many guys are lying to you, telling you, oh, just, you know, buy this course or do these three steps. You're going to become a millionaire. You won't, you won't. It is a 10 year game and you keep the same momentum even in the bad times, even when you lose a couple million dollars, you're like, damn, yeah. now what? That, and that's the part to me about you that makes you a superhero. Because sometimes when we think about superheroes, we think of super speed, super strength, you know, psychic powers. To me, your power is invincibility. Like you, That's a mindset, bro. Every, everybody can have it. Jose. I'm trying not to take the superhero title. Right? Because <laughs> I'm, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you're a superhero as an excuse for people to not strive and be like you. And I think that's the problem. That's like, what you don't like about I, it. That's what I don't like. Because when people hear that, they'll think, "Oh, he must be special." I'm not. I really am not. I, I, I'm just again. I wish you would have had this conversation with me when I was 16, right? If you would have seen 16-year-old me, you wouldn't have thought that guy's special. I promise you, you wouldn't have thought that guy's special, right? And same thing now, right? I'm not a billionaire now, but 40 years from now, when I do become a billionaire, there's going to be everybody kicking and screaming that, that, that it's not, that's not fair, that he's greedy, X, Y, Z. He must be special. Yeah. But I promise you, I'm not special. I'm just able to do it for the next 40 years. I could, I could truly lose it all right now, and I would still keep going. Like, it doesn't matter. Let me, let me, What's the alternative? Let me share you a story about what you're talking about from a, from a cartoon that I was a big fan of. Go for it. Um, so there's this cartoon called Young Justice. It's basically about like teenage superheroes. So Superman's, there's Superboy, Robin's there. All the sidekicks are part of this group called Young Justice. In season three, there were these aliens that would come to planet Earth and they realized that like the aliens were fighting a war on their planet. Mm-hmm. And he said like Earth has all these heroes. They have Superman, they have Batman, they have Aquaman, they have all these heroes, but we can't capture them, they're too powerful. So yeah. let's capture the kids. Yep. But then they realized the kids were too powerful themselves. They said, okay, but the kids have, the kids who are already heroes have already reached their full potential. But what they found is that in regular kids around the world, they have a hidden metagene inside of them. You don't mm-hmm. know. Yep. Something yep. happens to them and it activates this metagene. So kids all around the world have a metagene. Mm-hmm. So they, what they did is they would go around the world and they would like capture kids to see who had the Medellin. Do you know how they found out how you, if you had a Medellin or not? Go for it. They will put you under intense stress and pressure. They will put so much pressure on your, whether it's heat, whether it's freezing, whether it's putting, dropping a weight on, they'll put so much pressure on you that those who had that Medellin in the brink of, of collapsing, it would kick in and the superpowers will come out. But those who did it, they'll collapse under pressure. And, potentially pass away. So what I've, what I've realized is the superhero gene is really in all of us. It is. But it takes that pressure Absolutely. 
for us to be able to activate it, right? Like Absolutely. the whole day at 17 launching the, that was a suit business, right? Yep. The um, one that you lost 50, was 50,000? Something like that, yeah. 50,000, and you, and you got all that debt at 17. Most dudes would have collapsed under pressure, went into I mean, a wall. But that did, that woke something up in you where at 16, I would be like, oh, that's just a regular dude. But at 17, when you got hit with that pressure, it activated something inside of you that then became a seed, which turned into a tree, which became who you are today. You know, the best way to, you're basically describing human nature. You know, bio, bio, like, bi biologically, we are engineered to evolve, right? It's natural selection at play. When you put yourself under pressure, when your back is against the wall, you have two options. You yes. can either die or you evolve and survive. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian man, right, obviously. Please, I believe in God. Uh, but Charles Darwin had a great quote that said, it's not the smartest, strongest, or more in, most intelligent species that survives. It's the one that's willing to adapt to change, right? So if you as a man, that's, what did we talk about in the beginning of this, right? <clears throat> as, you, as you scale, if you, if you stay ambitious, right? You don't, you're not comfortable with a 50K or 100K or a million. <clears throat> your problems magnify. Yeah. They become much worse, right? If you constantly stay ambitious, if you're constantly putting your back against the wall, across, across the board, right, in fitness, with, with the gym, you're pushing numbers, you're pushing more weight, you're running longer, with, with, with your family, right? Spend more time with them, giving great memories. Be that man for your, not just your, your kids, but it could be your, your outside family as well. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly putting that responsibility on your shoulders, you will have two options. You will either die there and quit, mm -hmm. or you evolve and survive. Yeah. That's how you find your manager. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, I'm not special. Everyone has that within them. Yeah. But you have a mindset that'll tell you, you know what? This hurts. I, I do not like it. I don't like it. So then you, you die. You stay there. Yeah. Right? So going back to all that you do, because one of the things that I've realized in life is I don't get jealous about anybody's success. Yeah. And I think what happens is, is like we, we, people go on the internet, they see the Lamborghinis, they see the beautiful wife, they see all the things that you have, and like, man, like, I want to have that. But then I know how much work you put in mm -hmm. to get that. Yep. And then I also have the self-awareness to say, not that I can't put in that work, but I can't put in that kind of work at the pace that you're doing it. So therefore, maybe you're able to hit that number in five years. It may take me 10. So I don't have envy. I'm like, okay, this man just has something else in him that I don't have yet. But I feel like a lot of guys, they don't truly understand all the work it takes to be the man that you are. And that's the thing I admire about you. Like I have this new found slight disrespect when a single guy tells me he's busy. Yeah. Because I look at a person like you, who as I said, juggling 11 big plates, eight figure on his way to a nine figure guy who still has the ability when I need to talk to him to pick up his phone. Yep. So when Johnny B, you know, whatever, is working his $50,000 a year job and his $5,000 a year side hustle is so busy to be able to do X, Y, Z, those excuses don't mean anything to me. Yep. So, so my question to you is, how many men do you think truly have the ability to be optimizing at the high level that you are, family, business, and as a man at the same time? Less than 1%. Yeah. That is, again, it's, it's, it, that is the statistic. Yeah. And it's not, even, it's not even 1%. Remember, 1% is only half a million a year. Yeah. That's it, yeah. right? And that only takes into account finances. But to be a father, a husband, and, and, and Cause that, that, that's another thing. A lot of people believe just cause you have money, you, you'll be able to get women. Yeah. You'll, you could still have money and be a dweeb and a loser. Happens all the time. Why do you think, you know, escort services are very popular amongst doctors and lawyers? Cause they're still awkward. They're still weird, right? So, so to truly do it across the board, we're talking less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Like once your net worth is past 50 million, you're like 0 0.00001 already. So imagine now m multiply everything else. So again, you look, look at each other in the room right now, that means none of you, basically. And that should annoy you. 
That should piss you off a little bit that I even said that, right? But again, right? And, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> these events are great. They're great. It's, it's great energy. Yeah. But too many guys come to these events just to feel good for a weekend. You will not carry this energy for the next 10 to 15 years. Who will? This, if, if, there's, if there's a guy in here who will carry that energy, what would that guy be like in your opinion? Oh, that's tough, man. Again, I just, I, don't, I, I truly don't think there's anything special about the guy. But, I don't, but, I don't, but what separates him? What, what, do, you, what do you think separates him? Because everybody's in here hearing that message and some guy's like, F you, mother F. It's like, yeah, God, that's me. Like, I'm going to be. I'll who, tell you, I'll tell you what. He? I'll tell you what. Um, you know, I, I heard somebody else talk about, like, the, the two factors that uh, highly successful people have. Mm -hmm. One is, the first one is a deep level of insecurity. Right? And when I heard that, it triggered me a little bit, right? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Right? Uh, the second one is a high level of ego. Uh, to think you're that guy that can yeah. defeat that insecurity. Yeah. Right? And then the third one I think was, was like consistency. And then when I, when, when I really started to ponder on it, and I took myself back to that 16, 17 year old dude, I was deeply insecure. Until this day, I would still say I have insecurity. What are and any guy that's- What are they? My ability to continue to scale, right? Mm. When I see other guys do it and not me, again, it's not jealousy. I get mad at myself. Why can't I figure that out, mm. right? And then you, you should be confident enough to believe I can. It might take me a little bit longer, but I can, right? And throughout my entire process, all of it, everything that I fixed in my life from women to my own fitness, I was a scrawny kid. It was always out of insecurity. I used to have a big head. So I was like, F that, I'm putting on muscle, right? I've always been poor. So I said, F that, never again, right? I couldn't talk to women. Like I, I would literally freeze up. Mm -hmm. I said, F that, right? Got to build up that char charisma. All of it always came out of insecurity. And the interesting part is that I believe that once you're able to overcome that insecurity, that is the, that is the highest level of confidence. You can put me in a room of beautiful women. I'll never break. I won't break, right? Why? I'm not, I'm not afraid of losing my money too. I have the knowledge to make it again, mm. right? I'm not afraid of losing my body because I know I can build it again, right? You build true, impenetrable confidence. And the problem is, I would actually say, because again, when I heard that at first, I got annoyed. I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. I'm not an insecure guy. Yeah. But when, you, when I really started to process it, I think the true problem is the men that are naturally confident but have nothing to back it, right? Mm. There's men that are truly just confident men. We, we know a guy. Right? <laughs> they, 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 they feel like they're that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's nothing to back it. Yeah. I got everything to back everything I say. Yeah. You know? And as I continue to scale, right, and I continue to find those insecurities that I, I, I cannot figure out or solve, and I continue to beat those insecurities, I become more confident. And I believe it hardens me, right? So then I am okay with continuous failure. And that's another one, the insecurity of failure, right? Because what are my friends going to think? Yeah. What's my family going to think? What's yeah. my subscribers going to think? I'm okay with that. I've done, I felt so damn much already. Yeah. I'm okay with that, you know? So every insecurity you have, most people try to hide it, suppress it, and build this fake confidence, but build nothing to back up that confidence. Yeah. You know, so back to the question, who's that guy? Yeah. I, I would actually say it's probably the most timid guy here. The biggest loser, the guy that, that, that's a true dweeb that has nothing going for him, right? Family, friends, nobody believes in you. That's probably the guy, yeah. right? He has a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. That's the guy that needs to make it out. Everybody else that, that lives a great life, I'm not saying you can't make it out, but if I had to put my money on somebody, it'd probably be that guy. Yeah. He has something to prove. Yeah. No, this, no this is, it's, that's good. So you, you were talking about something that I, I think really makes you and, and great men great is, is not fearing losing everything and going back to ground zero. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something about you that if I'm being honest, that's my biggest weakness. And, and the part that I'm very curious about, how do you, 
maybe you just have so much money. But, <laughs> but how do you process that with a family? Because when I was single, right, hmm. I, it didn't bother me to go back home. It didn't bother me <laughs> to lose everything. But it's like, now that I have a family, I don't want to be the irresponsible, wealthy man who just blew his money. Then all of a sudden, his family suffered. And one of those stories, where my dad had his business back in the day. He was making money. He blew it. How do you reconcile that crazy ten ten tenacity with risk taking with the family that you got to take care of? Um, that's a good question. Man. I, I think one of the most important decisions you'll make in, in your life, if not the most important, is who you marry. Yeah. Obviously, I believe in marriage, right? Uh, my wife is an amazing partner. We're five years in. I still believe every single word I said in your first podcast. Yeah, yeah, when I had just gotten married, right? Yeah. Uh, best decision I've ever made. Love it. She knew exactly who I was from day one. And I, you, can go, you guys can go back and watch that podcast and see everything I've said. She knew exactly the type of guy I was, the risks I take. This is what I love to do, right? She supports me every day. And by the way, like, it's funny because, like, you know, I'll come home and we have conversations and she's, she's heard every single loss under the sun. Yeah. Every loss. And every damn time she's just like, well, try again. Mm. Try again. Not once has she like stuttered or say, well, honey, maybe you should save a little bit of money. You know, mm. not bro, not once on my kids yeah. has she ever said that. Yeah. So figure it out. God has your back. Like that, that's always what she, and again, I'm not a guy that needs motivation. But it makes it a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Makes it a hell of a lot easier. I come home, my daughter's screaming, Daddy. My wife comes and loves me, whether I'm a millionaire or I've lost a million, like she still loves me the same. That helps a lot. Yeah. And, she, and, and, I, and I always make the joke, I'm like, you'll leave me if I live in a box. <laughs> right? And she, she hates when I say that. I'm like, you'll leave me if I, if I would ever live in a box. Yeah. And then she, and like, she calls me out and she's like, well, I wish we do live in a box someday so yeah. I can prove it to you. Yeah. Right? Like she just, she really isn't that scared. Yeah. Um, which I love. Yeah. I love. No, I think, I think to me, that is something interesting I, I've learned about men who are performing at the highest levels is that you need that solid partner. Absolutely. To be that rock. Absolutely. Because one of the things I was telling guys is I said, like, as a single man, between 42.75 and 58.35% of your time is spent chasing women. Like, like, like that's if, like... If not higher. If not higher. Like, that's like the, the time you spend. Time, energy, money. All yeah. of it. And so you're performing, like, on a handicap as a single man. Absolutely. Because yeah. you're just so distracted. Girls yep. everywhere. There's so much everywhere. And then when you finally get that person that makes all those distractions go away, then there's all of a sudden you have this plethora of time that you're like, where did all this time come from? Right? But I know for a lot of guys, their, their fear is like finding someone as ride or die as someone that you have found, especially as they're up there in the mountaintop is higher, right? So, so what are your thoughts to some of the men who are like, man, like it's, it's harder to find that caliber of woman that you're describing as I'm leveling up the way you're telling me. I'm doing everything, Jose. I'm leveling up physically, emotionally, spiritually. I'm doing everything. But then as I increase, I don't find the women on that equal playing field. What would you say to a guy such as that? What do you mean they don't find women on an equal playing field? Like, they, they would, one of the things communicated to me is that there's two things that they find. They'll find a woman who's physically there to kind of meet their physical appetite, but, but mentally. mentally is not there. Or they'll find a woman who's mentally there to be able to raise their kids, you know, leave their legacy, be that person. But from an aesthetical standpoint, she may not have the look that he wants. And so the challenging part is that like, as a man continues to level up, so does what he wants in a partner. And he feels like there's a disconnect between what I need to build my and run my empire to what I'm experiencing out there. I, I definitely pro prioritize looks. Um, I think it's a mistake. Most men that have the uglier one end up, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 
they end up settling, right? Because yes. they're comfortable and they're afraid of entering the market again. Yeah. Right? Most, especially if you've been in a relationship for like six years, they're usually comfortable. They, they don't want to marry that chick, right? And you know it deep down, like that girl's ugly, right? Like you feel like you can do better. So I, I do prioritize looks. Uh, She's unattractive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy trying to be politically correct, bro. Um, so back to what you were saying, though, like the whole. The, the mentality thing, obviously, there, there's certain, you should have certain non-negotiables, like for me, you know, Christian woman, uh, dual parent household, like stuff that I knew I wanted, right? Yeah. Um, you should have your non-negotiables. Uh, but for the most part, the, 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 the menial things, right? Like the, the, there's very small things that uh, come down to your character. How masculine are you? The more masculine you are as a man, the more a woman will fall in line. What do you mean by that? So again, like, if you truly are a leader, disciplined, ambitious, she doesn't have to be your mother, right? You're a, you are the man of the household. She will fall in line. Uh, I'll give you a great example. My wife would be that, that woman. My wife's, my wife's really smart. Mm -hmm. Go get her by herself before she met me, right? She was the type that, you know, I don't want kids till I'm 35 and I'm really? blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And again, she had the non-negotiables, right? Yeah. I, I liked her mentality. She didn't like to party. She didn't like to go out. That was all on her, yeah. right? Um, took me like six months to, to, to get her in line. Like, she yeah. was like, and then they fall so madly in love with you because you are that guy. She wants to give you kids. Yeah. As soon as we got married, like, all right, well, when, when, when are we having kids? Yeah. Right? They, literally, they, they truly fall in line. And, and, and the men that fear that, oh, well, she'll cheat on me or she'll do this, that, and the other, I have no fear of that. It would be her lot. And I tell, I'm like, you, you can if you want. <laughs> you will lose. Like, yeah. I have no problem going back and I can, I can do it all over again. Yeah. I can do it all over again. Yeah. Right? So when you truly are built, and, and again, most guys enter a relationship, they, they get fat, they lose their ambition because they got the girl, they have the comfortable life. You know, you no longer have to wake up early because the bed's warm, <laughs> right? You want to spend more time at home than at work because work is stressful, home is peaceful. I feel it. I feel it myself. Like, like, that's what I was telling you, right? You come home, you're wounded up. Obviously, you want to spend time at home. It's your safe spot. Most guys get comfortable as soon as they get married. I haven't, right? Like, I, I'm probably more ambitious than when I was when I was single. Why? Because I've always, like, it, it's, it's something that I, that's, that, that's, you know, it's like self-driven. Like, you have to continue to pursue being that guy. So, I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life, cardiovascularly, physically, attract, you know, grooming, style, like, everything still as if I was single. Yeah. That woman will never stop loving you. Right? So you prioritize looks, you have your non-negotiables, everything else you'll fall in line. And if you don't drop the ball, she will be obsessed with you. Like, my wife is obsessed with me, bro. Yeah. She's my number one supporter. Yeah. And that's why I love her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? Hmm. Um, so for guys that, you know, have that problem, that's what I, I usually tell them. They're probably not masculine enough. Like most guys, again, most guys that are rich prioritize wealth right they, they became the doctor they became the lawyer they're still dweebs they end up getting a, a, a wife but the wife cheats on them because they're a dweeb with a guy that she actually wanted mm -hmm. right or vice versa you're a deadbeat maybe you, you might be somewhat attractive maybe you're jacked you were able to get a girl you prioritize picking up women but you're still a loser right you play video games you make no money so she's thinking what, what am i doing with the baby mm -hmm. i'm basically taking care of three children yeah right you're no man you're no leader if you do everything i'm telling i live Again, not to sound cocky, I've never had depression, bro. I've never dealt with any of this stuff. I live an amazing, even with all the problems at work, I live an amazing life, perfectly balanced. I have zero complaints. I would trade it for nothing. And I, and I devout everything to, obviously, God first. You know, that should go unsaid. And then fully focusing on just becoming great across the board. You know, and like, we've talked about this before, and, and I see no, no point in stopping. What's the alternative? Think about it, what's the alternative? Be on a beach? Like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll go to a beach. I'll go to Thailand a couple times, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's a good place to de-stress. You're gonna do that for 30 years and do nothing? That's your alternative? I truly see myself never retiring, never stopping. All, all, everything that I've talked about, I will never stop doing any of it. I don't see an end date for me until I die, yeah. basically. So to me, I think, the part that I'm curious to this question, well, how you'll answer this. All feelings, no facts, just your opinion. Do you feel as though 
there's more competent men who can put women in line in society, or is there more women willing to be put in line? Like, which one do you think there's abundance of? Do you think there's, there's more men or, who are like, they have the ability and the, the, the charisma, the, the, the holistic development to put a woman in line? Or do you think there's more women who are, they're wanting guys like that, but the guys are not available? Which one do you think? There's oh, more? there's definitely more women. More women. Yeah, absolutely. Why, what makes you think that? Because every woman, like, I, I've also joked around this, like, you could date the most feminist woman. If you truly are a masculine man, she'll still fall in love with you. You think so? I think so. I'll, I'll bet my money on it. Because that's what women naturally want. They truly want a guy that's a leader. A guy that they do not have to take care of. Statistically, you can look this up, right? So women are more college educated than ever before. So they're entering higher level jobs. They're making more money than ever before. Mm -hmm. And even though they're making more money than ever before, they still want a man that makes more money than them. Yeah. They're competent. They're smart. They can do it themselves. They still don't want to feel like they're the one taking care of the guy. Mm -hmm. That's just human nature. Doesn't matter how much we evolve, we're still animals. So if you truly are a masculine man, doesn't matter who the girl is, I promise you she'll fall in line. And if she doesn't, and you're in that frame and you're that confident, you can find somebody else. Yeah. Right? You're not going to be that tied up. And that's the problem with most guys, right? They get really tied up with one girl thinking that's the only girl that's available. Yeah. You don't have that mindset when you truly focus across the board. Yeah. You know? Do you, so going back to business and business development, I want to, I want to pause real quick and, 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 and talk about that for a little bit. Where do you get the time to manage that many businesses? I remember you, we were talking a couple years ago where you were like, I plan out all my marketing and ad content a year in advance. I was talking to your, your video guy about that. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling him. Where, what, what is your time machine located at? Is it in the bedroom? Is it in the office? Like, what, what, what's, I'm, try, I'm trying to understand from like, where, where, like, what is your time consisting of that you're able to optimize in such a... I, I honestly can't give you a great answer for that. All I can say is I do a lot of like to-do lists for sure, right? Because what time I, you wake up? Four, four, four thirty. Time you go to sleep? Uh, ten, eleven, give or take. Yeah. <laughs> but again, because I want to spend time with my kids, right? Yeah. I, I want that time at night with my with my daughter. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think w one problem is that it, it's it's very easy to get like flustered, right? It's very easy to think, man, I have so many things to do. So for me, like every morning, I've talked about this. Like I have a to-do list that I usually do the, the day before, right before I leave the office. All right. So I have, I have like four or five points. These are the things that I need to get done. No matter what, this is what I need to get done. And obviously there's probably more, but these are like the high level ones that need to be completed today. Yeah. And then every day I start already organized, right? And, it, when it, and then you also have to have self-discipline. Let's be real. I mean, we can run a test right now. Let's all pull out our phones. Let's go to usage. And let's see how much time you've spent on your phone. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm right? see who's I don't have my phone on me. You have your phone on you? Um, but Let me go see how much time I spent. You can all do it too, right? I think the average is like eight hours. Think about that. So your waking hours are about 12. So that means you only really have about four hours of productive time. I'm at, I'm at 4.32. You're at 4.32. We're midday. What, what time is it? 12? Yeah. You're probably at no, 7. No, it's daily. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. See, by the way, I was about to call him out. 432 is a, it's a good number, right? Where and you at? Ah, uh, that's probably around the same, 3, 4, something okay. like that. That's a good number. And obviously, I also, <laughs> you also work a lot, right? So you have yeah. to, you know, a lot yeah, of texting. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of that, social media posts, stuff like that. But okay. uh, for the most part, you should try to minimize that down. When you truly look at it, like, most of you will probably be at around 8. That's like the average. If you Google the number, it's like eight hours on your phone. There's only 10 waking hours, usually, 10 to 12. Mm. You spent 90% on your phone. Mm. Right? So you just have to have self-discipline. Mm. Again, right? It's, it's, just, it's not easy, bro. Like, everybody wants like a hack or a secret or a three tips to get, become a... It's truly not easy. Yeah. Right? It's, it's just, that's, that's just what it is. And that's why, again, when you go back to the statistics... You won't make it. Mm. You won't make it. Like, you truly have to be on point across the board. And that doesn't mean you won't have bad days. It happens. 
right? Or, or you'll slip up. But you have to be able to like resettle, right? Refocus every time. And the more you do it over the years, the better you get. You'll catch yourself procrastinating. Yeah. You'll catch yourself wasting time. You'll catch yourself slacking at the gym. Yeah. And you're like, nope, not acceptable. The way you should see it is it's almost like you're your own boss. Yeah. Right? Which I am, right? But like, imagine you have a boss. He tells you, you know, I need this project tomorrow by four. You're not going to go to him and be like, couldn't do it. Yeah. That's how you should treat yourself. If you tell yourself you're going to go to the gym five days a week yeah. and you look at yourself in the mirror on Sunday and you only went once, you're a pussy. Like, let's be real. You couldn't, you couldn't do the one thing you told yourself to do. You truly think you're going to make a million dollars? You won't. How, how many percent of your goals do you meet each year? Huh? How many percent of your goals did you say, like the things that you write down, that you say, I'm going to do this, how many percent do you, do you meet? Mm, that's hard. I've never really looked at it like that. Like I said, you act, I actually fail more than I win. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yeah. I fail a lot. Like, and when I'm talking about, because usually my goals are like number goals. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I want to make X amount. Yeah. And it didn't go like planned. Yeah. If you're talking about goals like going to the gym, stuff that I, can, that I have full autonomous control over, I probably hit all of them. That's what I'm saying. Like the stuff that you have control so over. So you hit all those goals. I probably hit all of them. Really? Like if I tell my, all right, this morning, remember I texted you yesterday? Yeah. I just ran 20 miles this morning. Yeah. That's what I did. Right? I knew I had your stuff to do here. Yeah. And then in my head, I'm like, man, I have to wake up at five. It's a weekend. But I told myself I was going to do a long run this weekend. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. Got up at five, ran the 20 miles. Like it doesn't matter. I'll show you the numbers too. No, we but listen. You guys don't know about it. I posted them on, I posted on Instagram. By the way, cold as balls. It was it was snowing. I think I got hypothermia. I was. I, you think I'm joking? I was like shivering when I got back. Yeah. Everything I set my mind to that I have control over, I will do. And that to me is, is probably like so. I I, I tell this story all the time. First time we we met. You told me you made a million dollars at 21. Correct. Yeah, something like that. And I was like, I'm going to do it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, he's going to do it. So did the math. It's like 83, 84,000 a month, something, something like, like that. that yeah. I hit it one month. Then ever since then, my money went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Momentum, right? And so what I realized, it was like, I set a goal out of envy. Yeah. Not out of self-awareness of like, okay, what should I be striving for today? Yeah. And then I realized I was like, I know what Jose does to get to where he's at. I know I'm not doing that. So there's, there's, there's no jealousy involved in my life because I know for a fact you earn everything that you've done. And, and I hope people are hearing you not it's like shitting on anybody and say, you can't be me, I'm the best. It's like, no, this is what it takes to yeah, get no. there. Yeah, you know like it's mean? not, it, it should not be a, a, like you feeling like crap. It should be like, this is the reality. I'm not yes. going to lie to you. Yes. This is what it is. Like, it's less than 1%. That's the number you're trying to hit. So for example, for like your 83, let's say whatever, ta again, what you set your mind to, that's what you're going to do. So whatever tasks you did to get to the 83, you did them to the point or to the T the next month? No. There you go. Right? So that, that, that's in your control. So like when it's a number. Like tasks or like numbers? Tasks. tasks. I did all the tasks. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hit so that's numbers. what I'm saying. Sometimes numbers don't hit, right? Yeah. There are external factors that, that come into play. Yeah. Market cycles, all this other stuff comes into play. Yeah. That's why I, I fail a lot of projects, right? Or, you know, you, you hypothesize, I think this is going to work and it doesn't end up working. That happens a lot. But if you've set your mind, this is what I'm going to do to get to that number yeah. and you drop the ball, that's on you, right? A hundred percent. And so I realized at that time, having that self-awareness humbles you and it causes you to work in your lane because some guys may not be a seven figure guy, but you, you might be a $200,000, $150,000 guy, but don't be jealous of the seven figure guy because you're not willing to do what he's willing to do. And I think that's a part of the, in the internet, people are like, oh, just do X, Y, and Z. You can yep. make this money, yep. get this girl. It's like, yep. no, actually, which is why I want people to experience you. It's like, bro, like, this is who Jose is, all off camera, on camera. This is how he is for the past 12 years. Yep. 
You're motivated after a day and this is gonna die. He's been this way for 12 years. This is what it takes. Not some get rich quick scheme that you've seen on the Instagram ad, right? Yeah. And so it's that perspective that manages the, 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 the arrogance, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. to me, that's a part I've always admired about you is that like your life is truly the standard because you work in such a way where you set the standard. Because to me, like, so many guys, money and muscles, and that's it. Yeah. But you're like husband, father, brother, son. Like, like there's so many areas of life where you also want to be performing so highly there. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the part that I am always inspired by. Because yeah. we just don't have enough men like you in today's society. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I agree. Like most of the focus, like we, we opened up with that, right? Most of the focus is just money, but money won't solve your problems. Yeah. If anything, it, it'll magnify your problems. Yeah. It'll make your life a little bit harder across the board. You know, friends start to come in, right? You have to learn how to manage that. You have to learn how to manage your, your, your family too that is not maybe used to that type of cash. You know, you, you, you then also have to be motivated. When you make your first million, the first thing you're going to do is blow it. Happens. What did you blow it on? Cars. <laughs> Think about a house. You know, I still blow it on cars. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm also, I'm probably the least financially responsible one. Like, I, I truly believe in spending what I make. Like, just being brutally honest. How much like, if I want a watch, save? I'll get a watch. If I How want a car, I'll get a car. How much percent do you save? 10, 20 percent. It depends, really. Okay. But again, I, if, like, if, if I want something, I'll buy it with my savings. If it's something big. Okay. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I, I maybe don't listen to me in that part. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the way I always say it is I don't want to drive a Ferrari at 50. I love that I got to drive my McLaren when I was 19. Great experiences. I love that I got to buy my house at 22. I, like, I, love, that, I love where I get to live. I true, like, for everything that I work for, I want to enjoy it. And my next few purchases will be dumb. Like, really, financially dumb. But I want it. Mm. You know, and I'm working for it. You know, like I, I truly like enjoying what I make. Yeah. I don't like just storing it away. What was the last crazy purchase that you got? Uh, it's probably a watch, I would say. It was probably a watch. 50,000, uh, 100? I think it was, the, it was a Patek. It was like 120. Yeah. Like that. Why not? Yeah. I, I, like, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't bought anything crazy after. I yeah. think, oh, the Lambo. I did get the Lambo after that. So the yours? The yours, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That was probably the last one. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Chilling for now. Jose, man, I think to me, the, the, the story that I, that I love about you is you always bring it back to God. Yeah. Because it's so easy for people to hear your story, see all the things you're doing, money, 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 cars, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff. But you're always going back to God. Absolutely. What keeps you so grounded spiritually in the midst of this, all the success you've attained over all these years? Because I know I wouldn't be here without him. Like, uh, just truthfully speaking, at the end of the day, he opened the doors. I, I, I almost say he probably gives me the motivation. He, he gives me the energy to just even be here. Um, I remember being that broke kid at 16, 17. I just remember praying. I'm like, get me out of this, God. And I swear to God, it was like three months after just things started to fall in line, something like that. And then I told you this last time, the way I see it now, it's, you know, it's, it's almost like, a, you know, imagine your father gifting you like a field, right? Like a, like a farm field. Yeah, it's almost uh, like you spit in his face if you don't work that field. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. God blessed me with something. I, I'm, I'm relentless with it. Like I, I would be spitting in his face if I don't grow this. I don't, I don't cultivate it. If I don't work at it 24-7, mm. he truly gave me a blessing, you know. And I also use it as wisdom, right? One of my favorite books is Proverbs. I love, I, I've probably read, read, re read Proverbs 10 times over. Yeah. One of the best books. It talks a lot about discipline, about being lazy, right? About work ethic. It also talks about how you deal with money, right? I mean, just look at the Jewish people, man. Yeah. There's a reason why they're in the top Sheesh. for generations. They got it down packed. Mm. You know, Jew, the, the, the Jewish people's relationship with money is different than what we grew up with. It's for a reason, man. 
works out. It's 100% God. I love it. I love it's 100% it. God. I love it. So I want to go ahead and I want to open it up. Let's do it. To the audience and to the men in the community. Listen, everybody, listen. I hope you guys were as blessed by this conversation with Jose as the gentlemen who are in this room. I think to me, um, the, the beauty of what we do is connecting great men to each other. And every time I'm interacting with Jose, just literally just being in his presence, just, just feeling the energy exude from him motivates me, inspires me for greatness. And so my biggest challenge is that these live podcasts should be a, a, a vehicle of inspiration for you to want to get into rooms with other men like this, to not just sit back on the internet and just consume information, but to get there in person and experience transformational content and transformational relationships that will change your future legacy. Jose, where can the people find you at? Yeah, uh, I teach humans fashion across the board, all accounts. So Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, that's where you can find me. Guys, you know how we get down. Please reach out to Jose, show him some love, support all that he does. Thank you guys so much. My name is Hafiz and I'm joined by... Hey, Jose. Appreciate I, you, Hafiz. Guys, give it up for our brother Jose, man.